about this. You guys know a guy named Isaac Diane here or Sterney or another thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No. I run, <laughs> I have a mixed background. Believe it or not, I used to be a New York City police officer. It's a long story, but I did it. And I train, I teach martial arts professionally. You know, martial arts, like karate, judo, martial arts. And I train police here in Israel. That's my background. Why am I mentioning it to you? Because I took the same background I have to train the military and the police, which I've done for a long time. And we used it and created a modality to help sick children. I work with kids with cancer, kids with cerebral palsy, kids with cystic fibrosis, all sorts of diseases and disabilities here. And we've learned how to use martial arts in a therapeutic way. And what we do is we're, we're seeking volunteers from this school and Father Yeshivot as well to help me help rescue sick and disabled children. Now, we're starting a program here, December 26th, we have a major program coming into the school. I have permission from Rabbi Levy, who I know from 20 something, 20, 30 years ago maybe, I used to right away run a program for the Jewish poor. And one of the students wanted to work from President Reagan at that time. I don't know if you know that. There's a student named Robert Wurgel, one of my finest students here, and also uh, uh, Louis Leader. And we went right to the White House with this stuff. And wow. hopefully we'll do it again here. But it's an incredible mitzvah to be able to go and work with kids who are dying of cancer, who are, who are living with horrible breathing diseases here, and change their lives around with some very basic modalities that we've developed through martial art training. So things like punching and kicking up, most people think that it's martial arts, it's much deeper than that. From a science point of view, we're trying to set up a neuroscience club. Who's going to be a doctor here? Must be somebody, right? Free medicine, okay. I also teach a program at the University of Penn. You know, it's a very it's a top college here, and I teach a program to a pre-med student, which we have an ongoing program there right now. So we want to do the same thing here at the issue of Flatbush, we hopefully can turn into a monthly program where we're bringing in sick and disabled children here, and I need some of you guys to volunteer. If you speak to Isaac, Diane, or Sterney, those are two major people I'm working with. I'm also going to be hopefully opening up a regular martial arts program for those who want to stay in good shape and learn some basic uh, training. But one of the things that we do from a science point of view, we do things that would enable kids to do rehabilitation and also through pain management. Let's say take pain management. I, there's something called, did anybody hear the word guidance imagery before? It's okay. I speak to some professors in college, I haven't heard of it either. But the concept is very simple. And you'd be surprised. So you can take very simple everyday concepts and really change lives. Makes people happier, makes people able to cope with their, uh, with their pain and their disabilities. I'd say we're curing it, but we have what's doing like uh, coping mechanisms. And one of the ways, every time. Ever watch a movie one day and you have a, anybody have a toothache in the last couple of years? Really bad toothache? Is it painful, really miserable, right? Uh, yeah, irritating you. But somehow, if you were watching a movie, it, the pain seems to come back on the commercial. You ever notice that? You know? It's you know, or if you're engaged in something that you're really involved with, like you may be on the internet or something, you know, and you, the pain sort of takes a slide because it's distracting. Now we can learn how to do that at will. That's what we do in martial arts. Picture guys who are fighting. You ever see people, you know, kickboxing and fighting and all that stuff, you know? Every time they hit, do you think it doesn't hurt them? You ever watch a boxing match? The guy's getting pummeled in. He's in terrible pain. It's not pleasant to get hit. I've been hit. I was a cop for years in the streets of New York. Now, I had fights like three or four fights a week. I used to work with gangs. I was a teacher, so they put me back with the gangs and the kids. That's another story. But, so the idea is, is that we learn how to push the pain away so we can function. The same way we train the military and police, we can teach it to kids. <clears throat> There's a whole science behind this. And one of the ways we do this is we do this through this guidance imagery. One of the things that we teach the kids is about the body, about your own body. So what is pain, you tell them? Well, if I ask you what is pain, what would you tell me, anybody? What's pain? It hurts. Okay, it hurts, that's good, go ahead. <laughs> what else? Right. How would you describe pain to somebody? Mm -hmm. What? First is both. We'll take physical for now, then we'll do the emotional. How would you describe physical pain? Yes, sir. When the nerves get. What's a nerve? I don't even know what a nerve is. You know, can, now if I'm talking to an eight-year-old kid, he doesn't even know what a nerve is. Uh, he heard the word nerves. You get on my nerves a lot, they may say, right? But what is a nerve? So what we do is now I'll take a book. I usually have a nice big textbook. And with big pictures, where the kidneys are, you guys know where the kidneys are, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Right, where the lungs are in the back, okay? And we image this. Now, let's say I, I had a kid who was, had uh, cancer in the kidney. And the kidneys are back here, by the way, okay? I'm sure you all knew that already. But, now, and he's getting constant pain in his lower back. So how do I try to break away some of this pain and he can learn to fight it? Here's what we do with guidance imagery. I'll have him take some breathing exercises. That's another way to breathe in through your nose, down through your mouth. 
to relax the body, has a relaxing effect, and we'll teach from a science point of view how that works. But we describe pain as, here's what pain is, we image it. And here's the image we get. Picture a, uh, a cell, a typical kidney cell, whatever it looks like. You know, you know what cells look like, right? You see different cells in the body. Image any cell in your mind right now. There's no pictures here, but, because I came in prompt today, okay? But usually we'll have pictures of different cells. And then picture, in that cell, there's a little boy or a little girl being frightened. Why is he frightened? Because there's a cancer cell, an ugly ninja, monster cell. It's stabbing at him, and it's kicking him, and it's punching him, and, and they're hitting him, and beating him up, and kicking him, and whatever. Okay, I don't want to get carried, I get carried away here. Anyway, now, he's frightened, but sure enough, there's the antibody. You guys know what antibodies are, right? Right? And we dress him up in a uniform as a cop or a samurai. And lo and behold, he's coming down through the lymph system here, and he's coming down through the different nerve endings, and they're fighting, and he images it despite. So what is pain? There are cells that are dressed up as ninjas, punching and kicking at these other healthy cells, trying to get him, that's what cancer does. But if he images the antibodies being formed, and they're attacking. Now, how does he image it? It's one thing to say they're fighting, but now we teach him moves of karate, blocking. You know, striking, kicking, punching, right? Throwing, joint locking, strangulations here. And we're teaching him all these techniques. And then as he practices these blocks, kicking punch, he meditates this and he images that these cancer the antibodies, he's now in charge. He's like the what? They're actually doing it. We're actually they're actually doing it, right. So he's doing it here. And then to further image it to make it more visceral, what we'll do is we'll have instead of punching a bag, we'll have a bag shaped like a cancer cell. And in their mind, they're beating up the cell. You understand? They're, it's a visceral experience where they're really they're seeing what they're doing here. So then when they close their eyes and they image this, they're actually beating now. And is this, is this just a fantasy? No. There's a lot of science behind this done by the National Institute of Health that talks about this. When you say this over and over again and you believe it, the brain sends different messages over to the nerves and it actually distracts you from the pain. Now we've used it for kids in hospitals. And we've used the kids in, you know, uh, at different centers here. We do demonstrations. And we're going to use it here coming this coming December 26th. And I hope all of you can come and attend. And uh, you're welcome to come. Invite your parents if you like and the teachers also. And you can see how this works. And you can do it right here. You can use these techniques for yourself. And the same thing works in emotional pain. Because what are our thoughts? Thoughts are brain chemistry. Now, when you listen to good music, does it soothe you a little bit? Or if you listen to some, something with a beat that's going to hype you up? You can do the same thing. You can change people's states of minds through different senses here. Anyway, I'm not trying to make this a whole biology class for you, but there's a lot of science behind this. What I need from you guys one, is one to physically volunteer when the kids get here to help make phone calls. We're calling up every major hospital in the New York area. I have some of the kids who were assigning people to make phone calls with a simple like three sentences to say, invite them to come, and then contact our office for more information. And then I need someone to do some research. All right, is anybody into research? My future pathologist, doctor, is that right? That's yes. why I had, that's why I invited the Mary Maxwell into the room, because it, there's like a big piece that has to do with research. There's a major, if you guys want to do some research on the side, and hopefully you'll get some credits or you some free classroom here. We maybe want to, we're setting up this neuroscience club that we'll meet like once every couple of weeks here, and we'll discuss research projects. Now, it happens to be my lovely wife, named Raquel, is, is works as a research person at Long Island Jewish North Shore, Long Island Jewish Hospital. She's going to be in charge. We're building a virtual library. So I need people like you to contribute to this. So I'll give you a topic, you'll research it, and if it looks good, then we, some of these articles are for, meant for medical people. Believe it or not, some of them don't research that well. That's what my wife does. She researches for them. And two is that we need certain articles for parents of disabled and sick children to put it in simple uh, language here, for layman's language. You understand what I mean? I think if it's too technical, it may not be good for the everyday people that we need to work with this material. So who would be interested in, like, to do some research? Big myths for work you can do. Who would be interested in working with the kids when they come here to the school? All right. Good. You better you didn't raise your hand. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Anyway, the point is, and there's going to be, hopefully, uh, I'm working on a program to do something in Israel. I was mentioning to your teacher here that we want to do something with wounded warriors. The concept of Israeli soldiers who get hurt. There's a place called Beth Elohim in Israel, in Israel, and we're, to, uh, we're trying to do something as we raise funds to do something. Eventually, we're hoping to open up the first dojo school, a martial arts school to help sick and disabled kids. So it would be a great thing. It's a big Kiddush Hashem to do this with. And if you guys can be involved with this and help us research and get some other kids involved and other classes involved, we'll meet, we'll you know, work with your, your teachers here. You know, it'll be incredible stuff. And I can get some of your stuff that you research printed. And if anybody likes to write in journalism, we can put local uh, stuff in local papers here, which is very important to get more kids. 
but trying to start a program in all these shivot, basically, the other like pr progressive modern shivot, to say, listen, this is Tikkun Olam, this is what we have to do. It's like a Sherrod Liami program, you know? Now, right now, when I was younger, we used to help out Jews who came from the former Soviet Union, there was a lot, but I don't see that much activity. This is something, kids live right around us here in the neighborhood. They're in wheelchairs, you must see them sometimes. Jewish and non-Jewish alike. By reaching out and, and helping them and making their life more attainable to live in optimally, you're doing great mitzvah. And what is, let me show you some of the things that we do in our paper off. I don't have, I didn't bring my equipment down here. Let's say, kind of a foam, I use, I'll use my own stuff, okay? Let's say, can I borrow you for a second? Just stay there, I hope you don't get hurt, okay? No, I'm only kidding. Let's say you're in a wheelchair, can't walk, okay? So I'll have somebody, uh, let me borrow you first and then you next, come here. Okay. I'll give you one simple thing by teaching people about awareness, okay? I'm gonna swing this over your head. Just step away, step away. Like I was a club, just step to the side. What? Good, and I keep coming, keep stepping to the side. That's how I train real people, actually, you know? See how you're doing this? My kids can't walk, but you can do it in a chair. Shift shift to the side, one. Oh, miss, no, shift shift your body, one. Okay, now talk, just bend, bend down. Right, I have people moving, they never thought they can do this thing. They're moving, they're dodging, they're moving. Some say, I don't want to do it too late, I'm gonna hit you. And all of a sudden, they're moving. But just first, we're getting them excited. I'm getting their heart rate up, cardiovascular motion here, okay? Then we do some flexibility, some stretching with them. Then we do some muscle strengthening. Then there's balance, agility, coordination, dexterity here. This does a tremendous thing, and this helps us with the next topic that you'll research people, cognitive, kinetic connection. Cognitive is what? Oh, it's not. Cognitive? Brain. Brain, right? Thinking processes, kinetic. Okay. Move it. Move. Ah, there you go. Speak to Roger. This is a smart. Thank God. Thank God. <laughs> anyway, so what we do is we have this thing, cognitive kinetic connections. Now, I, I used to be a high school history teacher myself in the public schools a while back in the Shiva. And I can tell you right now, because I work in kids who are really have bad backgrounds in education here, but I found when they're in motion, they seem to do better. And we do the same thing for sick kids. You ever see like urban kids, especially the young urban black kids, they listen to rap music, they can memorize books of information. They don't science and social, they have trouble learning. But when people are in motion, they have their adrenaline pump, the endorphins are going, the serotonin in the brain is moving here. You get all these chemicals moving, you're feeding them more chemicals, it, help, it, it helps get the cognitive ability back, okay? Believe me, it works, okay? And I need more people to document some of this material and tell me, teach us to the kids. So who would like to volunteer? Big mitzvah work, it's a free mitzvah, okay? Easy going here. So one of these we'll do, I'll be in touch with your teacher, Ms. Bacon. I, I, I will be here, God willing, there's Hashem next week, I think, I'm not even sure, uh, Wednesday, I think, or Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, actually. Uh, you can speak to Isaac Diane. you guys know him? Yeah, he's yeah. in the, you don't know him, he's in 11th grade, but I do, okay? So we'll, he's, he's actually worked in the summer, right? Over right? the summer, he did some of this. He came to Brookdale Hospital with me, we had problems with St. Mary's Hospital, Brookdale Hospital, I've been to a few other hospitals before. And you're working with kids with sickle cell anemia. And you're working with kids with cancer. Yes, I'm sorry, ma'am? Um, no, to volunteer at a hospital health. Which is another topic I'll talk about. Another topic. I don't want to mix two things in the end now. But for us right now, it's one thing to, to I, I will tell you one thing which is really beautiful. One of my uh, fellow colleagues who teaches martial arts is also a teacher himself, you know, academic subjects. He came up with a program for a peace program using martial arts therapy in Israel and other places here. Connection is like this. It's that, you know, you heard about the war, of course, with Hamas and the horrible things that they did. And, you know, I'm more for obliterating Hamas, don't get me wrong. But one of the things that we do is we can focus on sick kids. We want to have a program in the Palestinian section here and go to the hospitals one day with five six volunteers and work with sick kids there and do the same thing in Israel and do the same thing in Jordan and a couple of countries. Say, listen, can we stop war for a moment? Like a public relations program focusing on sick kids. Can we stop blowing each other up and work on the sick kids who need help? and give attention there. So people who are involved in media are trying to push something like this together. That's something to plant in your head. But what you guys can do right now, if you have, if you have access to the internet, which I'm sure you do, you can do some research. I'm gonna leave you. Do you wanna leave, oh, you want leave them your email address? Yeah. Also?
endorphins are going. This serotonin in the brain is moving here. You get all these chemicals moving. You're feeding them more chemicals. It help. It, it helps get the cognitive ability back. Okay. Believe me, it works, okay? And I need more people to document some of this material and tell me, teach us to the kids. So who would like to volunteer? Big mitzvah work, free mitzvah, okay? Easy going here. So one of the things we'll do, I'll be in touch with your teacher, Ms. Bacon. I, I, I will be here, God willing, there's Hashem next week, I think, I'm not even sure, uh, Wednesday, I think, or Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, actually. Uh, you can speak to Isaac Diane. You guys know him? Yeah, he's in the, you don't know him. He's in the 11th grade, grade, but I do, okay? So we'll, he's, he's, actually worked in the summer. Right, right. Oh, yeah, right. He did, Over the right. summer he did some of this. He came to Brookdale Hospital with me. We had programs at St. Mary's Hospital, Brookdale Hospital. I've been to a few other hospitals before. And you're working with kids with sickle cell anemia. And you're working with kids with cancer. Yes, I'm sorry, ma'am? Um, no, to volunteer at a hospital help. Which is another topic. I'll talk about another topic. I don't want to do things in here now. But for us right now, it's one thing to, to I, I will tell you one thing which is really beautiful. One of my uh, fellow colleagues who teaches martial arts, is also a teacher himself, you know, academic subjects, we came up with a program for a peace program using martial arts therapy in Israel and other places here. The connection is like this. It's that, you know, you heard about the war, of course, with Hamas and the horrible things that they did, and, you know, I'm more for obliterating Hamas, don't get me wrong. But one of the things that we do is we can focus on sick kids. We want to have a program in the Palestinian section here and go to the hospitals one day with five six volunteers and work with sick kids there and do the same thing in Israel and do the same thing in, in Jordan and a couple of countries say, listen, can we stop war for a moment? Like a public relations program focusing on sick kids. Can we stop blowing each other up?